Deno, a brand new way to write server-side JavaScript. It solves many of the same problems as Node.js and was even created by the same guy. Like Node, it uses the V8 JavaScript engine under the hood, but the rest of the runtime is implemented in Rust and TypeScript. Our journey into Deno land begins in a single TypeScript file. In this file, we have access to all the types in the runtime, which means we can write strongly typed code and get documentation and IntelliSense directly in the IDE, without ever needing to touch a tsconfig file. The features in the runtime can be accessed from this Deno namespace. Let's console log the current working directory of the file system. We can execute our script with Deno run from the command line. But you'll notice it throws an error, and that's because Deno is secure by default. You, the developer, need to give permission to perform different actions in the runtime. In this case, we can use the allow read flag to allow this operation. Security's great, but my favorite thing is how everything asynchronous is promise-based. We can make a network request using the fetch API just like we would in the browser. And because it supports top-level await, we don't even need an async function here. We can start resolving promises without any extra boilerplate code. Deno attempts to make your code as browser-compatible as possible. It contains a window object with lifecycle events that you can listen to, allowing developers to more easily write code that can interop between browsers and servers. Not to mention, it can also execute WebAssembly binaries. But one thing that won't work in Deno are your NPM packages. Instead, you import packages using the modern ES module syntax, with remote modules being referenced by their URL. When you run your script for the first time, it will download this code locally and cache it. There's no package JSON, and code can be referenced from any URL, very similar to how things work in the browser. Deno provides a set of standard modules to solve common use cases. For example, we can import serve from the HTTP module. We can use it to create a server that's treated as an async iterable. We can then await every request from the server and respond to it accordingly. And that's an awesome starting point for a server-side JavaScript app. Now, Deno 1.0 just hit release candidate 1. So if you start using it today, consider yourself an early adopter. Do you think Deno is the future of server-side JavaScript? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, hit the like button, and I will see you in the next one.